，看起来像玩具车，外形又酷似飞碟。这是现在讨论热度越来越高的太阳能车。以往在太阳能车的竞赛中，为了追求轻量化、低风阻，驾驶空间都设计得非常狭窄，舒适度不佳。今年在澳洲举办的世界太阳能车挑战赛，大幅修改评比原则，要求朝向商业化和量产方向设计，因此首度将舒适度纳入评分。参赛车款的外形也与往年大不相同。The field is so far apart this year. All the cars look completely different. All we know is we got a good car. We got it running perfectly in the last couple of days, and we're really confident we're going to do everything it takes to win. 十月八号，世界太阳能车挑战赛在澳洲开跑。这项世界级的赛事被视为太阳能车竞赛的最高殿堂。今年一共有三十个国家、四十二支队伍参赛，其中也包括了来自台湾的阿波罗太阳能车队，以高雄应用科技大学和圣约翰科技大学共同研发的阿波罗八号参赛。比赛路线长达三千零二十一公里，纵观澳洲南北，除了沙漠地形，多变的气候也是各国车队的严酷挑战。由于太阳能车以太阳能板发电作为动力，追逐太阳就成为车手们的重要任务。So we're looking at satellite images from this morning, and we can actually see the clouds developing and shifting to the east. And this is very important for us because this helps us to decide what speeds we're going to drive, and at what moment we'll be. Uh, in certain areas where there's a lot of sun, which is always nice when you're doing solar racing. 两年举办一次的世界太阳能车挑战赛，分为三个级别，有倾向流线型车款，而且只限一人乘坐的挑战者级，还有需一人以上乘客的巡航级，以及非竞赛级别的冒险级，让曾参赛的车款也能一起在艳阳下奔跑。十月十二号，由荷兰队的努纳九号率先抵达终点站——南澳的阿德雷德，历时三十七小时十分钟又四十一秒，平均时速为八十一点二公里，连续三年夺下冠军。再次拿下挑战者级别冠军的荷兰队阵容庞大，通过终点限时，队员们还一起大声欢呼努纳，表示喝彩。Yeah, of course, it's it's excited. We we have been working this year so hard, and after a whole year of working, you end up in this fountain. It's that's what you want. That's the only thing you want. 另一方面，今年巡航级的比赛强调商业化和量产制造的潜力，因此可以看到由圣约大和高印大共同研发的阿波罗八号更接近于房车外形。虽然未能于今年赛事获得名次，但足迹已踏遍世界的阿波罗车队，还曾拿下世界第二的佳绩。若能将这一路以来的经验化为进步的原料，未来值得期待。